The motion plates are quite complex parts and will need to be made up for a number of subcomponents which would ultimately be soldered together. There's the main body, some bracketry around the top, this bracket or banding around the side and across the bottom, and the various holes for the slide bars and the expansion link bearings. At the end of my last video, I did mention that I was about to run into a major issue. So before I progress with the build of these motion plates, let me take a couple of minutes to walk through the details of that issue. On sheet two of the drawings, Don gives a plan view of the frames, the wheel sets and the associated valve gear and coupling rods. And from that, I'm showing a section here. Here we have the cylinder, the top of the top slide bar, the front wheel, the leading coupling rod, and buried in here, we can just see the crosshead. The issue is, is that if everything so far has been made to Don's dimensions, then the crosshead and the coupling rod will actually make contact. And then when you include the lateral float for the wheel set, they will definitely be a collision. Now, luckily for me, back in part 13 of this series, Matthew Stewart did leave a comment warning me of this issue. Thank you, Matthew. And as a result, when I came to machine the cylinder blocks, I pushed out the piston center line by an extra millimeter, as we can see in this diagram here. I will of course now need to make the corresponding change to the motion plates. Which brings me nicely onto my next issue, that being Don's design, in particular this part of the drawing. I have three challenges, the first being just understanding this drawing, the lack of a single reference point and the multitude of different fractions has made this very difficult for me to understand. The second being the conversion to metric. That shouldn't really be too difficult, but given the first challenge, it's not proven too easy. And lastly, I need to update the design in accordance with what I've built so far. And by that, I mean my conversion from imperial to metric and those little changes that all start to add up. I should also add that there are a couple of errors on this part of the drawing but I've dealt with those in my conversion to metric. So, armed with a calculator, a spreadsheet, and LibreCAD, I've updated Don's design as I'm showing on the screen now. I've also been leaning very heavily on Fusion 360 to help me visualize these parts coming together. To make the main body of the motion plates, we're back in familiar territory. First, I cut a couple of pieces of three mil mild steel sheet and then use the end mill to give me two reference faces. Whilst I've got these clamped to the milling table, I take the opportunity to drill the two holes for the bolts that will clamp onto the slide bar blocks. The positioning of these holes is really quite critical, which is why I'm doing it now. After marking out the main section that needs to be cut away, I get busy with the hacksaw and some files. You may notice that I split the parts and I'm now only working on one of the pair. To help with the filing, I've got the workpiece bolted between two bits of bar. They're not hardened, but I can feel when I need to back off. And a quick check before I move on. For the part of the top bracket that sits against the frame, I've already cut a piece of mild steel, although it is deliberately oversized in the vertical dimension. And to progress, I need to find a way of fixing it to the main body. And I do that by drilling and tapping two 10BA holes in the edge of the main body of the motion plate. I am doing this very carefully. It's just so easy to break these small drills and taps. After drilling the corresponding holes in the bracket, I fit it temporarily to the motion plate and then park it. We'll come back to this one again later on. To finish off the profile of the main body, it's pretty much more of the same with the drills, hacksaws and files to bring it to shape.
The 10 BA bolts I'm using to hold the bracket to the main body are only temporary. The joint will eventually need to be soldered. Ideally I would have used countersunk screws but I don't have any. But I do have some slotted head screws so I slightly counterboard the bracket to allow me to fit these screws. Which in turn allows me to fit the motion plate so that I can use the frame to mark that vertical dimension for the bracket. With the bracket marked accordingly I can now file down to the line and then I mark a parallel line to that and file down a further 3mm. This is to bring it flush with the top of the main body as we can see here. After bolting it back to the main body I reattach the assembly and spot through for the mounting bolt holes. After drilling all four I remount the assembly and offer up the top part of the bracket which I've already cut and filed to shape. I carry on in the same vein, drilling and tapping holes in both the part of the bracket that sits against the frame as well as the main body so that I can hold the top part of the bracket in place. Again I'm using hex head screws which I'll replace when I get some countersunk screws in. For the band that goes around the outside edge of the main body, I take the same approach. First I drill and tap three 10 BA holes and then use a bit of 16th by 38 or 1.6 by 9.52 mil in my world, which I've drilled the corresponding holes in. To form the band around the bottom radius, I apply some heat with a gas torch and use a hammer for some gentle persuasion. To secure the bottom of the band to the main body, again I drill and tap 10BA. I should note that my approach here is somewhat sketchy and definitely not recommended. To complete the motion plate I do need to sort out the mounts for the expansion link bearing and also solder all the joints but I'm going to hold both of those for now and come back to them later. I don't want to tackle the motion link bearing mounts until I've got most of the valve gear in place mainly so I can properly understand how it all comes together and more importantly that I drill the respective holes in the correct places and of course I don't want to solder it all together until I've got those holes and mounts completed. The soldering will of course render all those 10BA bolts as redundant so they are effectively sacrificial and won't perform any function going forwards. That may lead you to question why I've taken this approach rather than just making the parts and soldering them together but I've really struggled with these motion plates I think this is my fifth or sixth attempt. I've been plagued with making some really stupid errors and also struggled to understand and translate the drawings into something workable. But I think I'm there now. And of course this approach by bolting the parts together at this stage does give me the ability to go back and make changes. Thanks for watching.